again, Mark here from Talking Bass. This week I'm going to show you one of the first bass tapping riffs that I learned back in the early 90s. Any level of player can try this line apart from maybe absolute beginners. It sounds cool, it's fun, and it can help improve your technique. It's the opening riff from Country Music, A Night in Hell by one of my biggest bass heroes, Stu Hamm. Now, before I get started on this riff, it's worth mentioning that this whole tune, as well as many others, can be found in this new release from Baseline Publishing. It's Stuart Ham Bass Transcriptions The Early Years, and it contains 17 complete transcriptions from the first three Stu Ham albums, all transcribed by my good friend Stuart Clayton. This is all with the blessing of Stu, and as always, the transcriptions are top-notch. There's both standard notation and tablature, as well as performance notes to help guide you through some of the technical hurdles. There are tunes like Flow My Tears, Surely the Best, Terminal Beach, and The Urge. I absolutely love this book, so go check it out as well as all the other books available from Baseline Publishing. These are the best quality base books on the market, so I'll link in the info below. So, just in case you don't know, Stu Hamm is a total legend in the bass world. He made his name as a sideman with Steve Vai and Joe Satriani after his stint at Berklee College of Music, and he went on to become a master of solo bass playing. His slap and tap style has gone on to influence a ton of bass players, including myself. And one of the things that I absolutely love about Stu is his musicality. His solo albums are not the stereotypical chops fests that you might think they are. His compositions are all great pieces of music in their own right, and his solo pieces are never chops for chops' sake. They're melodic and great to listen to, even though they can be fiendishly difficult to play. Stu completely changed my life when I saw his slap, pop and tap for bass instructional VHS video as a beginner bass player. And after that, I would spend every waking hour working on his pieces. This country music line was the first tapping riff that I ever learned. So uh, let's take a look. Okay, so country music is around 144 beats per minute and it sounds like this. So we're in the key of C major and we start with three simple slapped notes of G, A, B leading into the riff. So that's third fret E string, open A string, second fret on the A string. So, and then we're into the riff. So in this riff we've got two things to think about. We've got the bass line that we're hammering with the fretting hand and the chords that we're tapping with the picking hand. So to begin with let's look at the first bar. Okay. So. Once you have that first bar, you'll find adding the rest of the line fairly straightforward. So we've got this recurring bass line of C, G, C, G, just round and round. So all we're doing there is just hammering with this left hand, so you can either use the second finger or the first finger, just hammering down on the C, third fret of the A string, and then the G of the third fret of the E string. So just try playing that to begin with. One, Two, one, two, or one and two and three and four and. Next, we can add the chords. So we're going to take the index and middle fingers of the right hand and just tap down on the C and the G up here at the 17th fret of the D and G string. So it's the G there and the C up on the G string. So we just tap down with those two fingers. And you want to play these chords fairly staccato, so it's more like this, not this. And obviously we're playing on the off beats, so it's going to be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... So you can either play this with the thumb anchored on the, uh, on the neck there, which is pretty much how I generally play tapping lines, but with this one for some reason I do actually find it easier to actually put the thumb on the side of the index finger there, just to give me a little bit more rigidity, and then just tap down like that. So I've got the arm resting against the body, just have this woodpecker action. So now let's just put those lines together and all we have to do is alternate between the bass line and the chord. So C chord, G chord, C chord, G chord. And 
And if you want for a little bit of variation, you can play those two little uh, 16th notes on the top there. Just to make it sound even cheesier. Okay, so once you have that line down, we can just work through the rest of the progression. So that first chord was C major, okay? So we're on the C major there, which we play for two bars. Then we move to A minor, and we do this by simply switching the notes in the bass line. So we, same chord on the top, so, but instead of C and G, we play A and E. So we've got this perfect fifth pattern. So this is with the first and fourth fingers, or index and pinky, and it's fifth fret, the A, fifth fret of the E string, and then the E at the seventh fret of the A string. Oops. So that there, in effect, is an A minor seven. So we go from C major, Try round and round. So we have C major for two bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Then we have A minor for a bar. One, two, three, four. Back to C major for a bar. One, two, three, four. Back to A minor for a bar. Three, four. And then we have C major for another bar. One, two, three, four. We finish that bar with a D, fifth fret of the A string on beat four. So one and two and three and four. And then we switch our chord on the top to this G major. So we've got the G and the B. So that's 17th fret D string and 16th fret on the uh, G string. So here I'm again still playing with the index and uh, middle fingers there. We just have to rotate the hand round slightly. So instead of this simple, you know, woodpecker motion that we've got here, we bring the fingers round like this to play that chord okay so that's the end of that bar so okay so let's just work through all of that so slowly So that D leads us into this final chord of G major. So as I mentioned, we have this little chord up on the top and we're gonna shift down to this fifth down here of G, D. So this is going to be third fret E string, fifth fret on the A string. So same as the A, but down a whole step. So, and again, just for a bar. One, two, three, four. And then we finish up with So it's the same pretty much as our opening line but we play it two G's A B C and then G A B and then we're back in G G A B C G A B and then we're at the end so final bar again on the G and then you can just go back to the start okay so all of that slowly Play through that line as slowly as you need to and don't rush it. Also look for good solid contact in both hands. You want each of those notes to ring out nicely. Okay, and once you feel comfortable at a slow tempo, you can start to build speed until you reach around that 144 beats per minute mark. So remember the lesson material is all there over at the Talking Bass website and also check out the amazing Stu Ham transcriptions book over at Baseline Publishing. Okay, I'll see you next week.